Welcome back to Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. My name is Ross Jennings, and this afternoon I'm with Daniel Kano, who's bringing his show, Stick and Spiel, to the Fringe this year. Now, you're a Fringe well reg- Stick and Spiel? Uh, you're a Fringe regular. I am. And, uh, a fixture, in a fact. Fixture, a fixture. <laughs> Apparently. And last year you performed Jubador, Smash yeah. It Jubador, in previous Smash years. Smash It, yes. And, uh, uh, well, Jewish Chronicles. Yes, prior to that, various... Uh, versions of a thing called Jewish Chronicles. It's an okay. ever-evolving collection of of uh, songs or stories and song about <laughs> kind of Jewish stuff, really. Notice when I say Jewish stuff, they yes, yeah. start moving. Get like that. Hey. But, um, but, yeah, they're, but they're, I suppose that's the hook to hang it on. The Jewish yeah. things are the hook to hang it on. But in fact, they're stories about people, really, mm. is what it is. And it just happens to be that's my experience. Theme. Okay. Uh, and uh, also, it kind of niches us a bit. So the Jewish people tend to, they look, they're looking, sometimes they're looking for Jewish stuff and they all yeah. come to it because it is Jewish. Other, other people, Jewish people, that are no longer really very interested in Judaism, and in fact, would run a, a, a mile right, away from yeah. this. But in fact, it's not really a religious thing at all. It's uh, just, it's like, you know, there's a big kind of, there's a bit of interest in that sort of thing. For example, there's the, the old Jews General Jokes thing, which is now an off-Broadway show. Yeah. And, well, but this is really storytelling. Um, nice. And uh, in song, which is quite unusual. So that's kind quite, of, probably quite yeah. an integral part of that, of that community, because every community has a, has a, places quite a great importance on storytelling. Passing well, uh, down stories. Yeah, so there's a big tradition. Era, in, in, yeah. So I'm just doing it in a slightly more contemporary way. I suppose. But <laughs> you could say that, uh, you know, the tradition, the Yiddish storytellers, like Shalom Aleichem, for example. Yes. Oh, and then, of course, there is a great tradition of, you know, sort of well-known Jewish storytellers, particularly in America, you know, mm. Philip Roth and the Saul Bellow and all that lot, of course, would be uh, examples of that. So, but in America, there's a much more of a higher profile tradition of people telling Jewish stuff or being Jewish entertainers without, okay. without shame and worry. Whereas here, um, in, uh, you know, there's a little bit, le- you don't tend to not put your head above the parapet mm. so much. You don't get... You know, there's lots and lots of Jewish people involved in the entertainment industry, for example. They tend not to make such a song and dance about it. a big deal about it. Although it's changing a little bit. You've got Simon Amstel, of course, okay. and, thing, and the Friday night uh, dinner, although it's not mentioned. And have you so. performed in the States at all? Oh, yes, a lot. I, was, I, I tour there every year. In fact, oh, I've just come, just come back. So you've probably got quite a cult following there. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, cult following. I suppose, I suppose you could call that Judaism is just a big cult in, in itself. <laughs> um, but, uh, yes, no, I do... Um, uh, I, I play in the States and the interesting thing about that is that here I sometimes have to explain quite a lot of the, mm. some of the Yiddish references that I have and so I'll explain that um, there the Yiddish is no problem but, but, I, but, here you go. <laughs> but I have to explain the English you know. uh, okay yeah <laughs> um, and then uh, other examples would be like I, I have a song about a rabbi that's addicted a story it's a story in a song about a rabbi that's addicted to cocaine and uh, so I go uh, in, in LA I was just there uh, this is about a rabbi that's addicted to cocaine and they go so what? what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is that all? <laughs> and, and do you prefer songwriting or do you prefer singing? Or is that quite hard to? Well, choose I, the between? two things. The two things are uh, uh, com- they, 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 they do go hand in hand. I, mean, yeah. I, I have written, you know, I've, ri- I've written songs that other people have done. For example, yeah. actually, Craig Robert Hallwood, the um, um, you know the judge on Strictly Come Dancing, but yeah. also the director. He's in Panto this year, uh, and I've got he's doing a song of mine in that. So <laughs> that's quite funny. A big camp. Uh, called Fabulous because it must be such a, such a great sense of achievement when you're writing something A that rhymes you've got a great story that, that kind of comes comes into it and then singing that you, I suppose well I, I, I've been doing this for quite a, a yeah. long time now although this is I have a much sort of broader brush now so these kind of more epic stories are, are slight I'm slightly different to them but yes, it's it's very pleasing when it when it works. But it's it's a lot harder than writing yeah. just a straightforward story because <laughs> you, you you don't have the room to, to manoeuvre. You know, you've got to get everything. It's got to be concise. It's got to be in, you know, it's got to rhyme. It's, piece, and there's yeah. a certain comedy timing to things as well. You know, you've got to make sure that works. So, but I used to do a lot of um, songs on radio. Um, and uh, topical songs and stuff. I kind of kept, so I kept my blades quite sharp doing that stuff every mm. week. You know, you've got to come up with something. So um, keep the crowd entertained. Uh, yep, and you've got to do it, and you've got to learn the performance very quickly as well, because <laughs> it's not just in the writing of it, but it's in the delivery of it too. You know, it's, uh, it makes something funny. And with the audiences, is there any point that you sort of um, would either stop or, or change or? or if you're if you're thinking, oh, they're not they're not liking this vibe, would you go down a different route? No. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I can, it can, it's, it's rather more difficult in a fringe show when, yes. for example, I've only got four stories that I'm sure. telling, so yeah. I can't deviate too much because we'll end up going over time and yeah. all that sort of thing. Um, but no, I think uh, I, I, you know, I've played this material material like it to uh, in all sorts of places and theatres and stuff across the world and Australia <laughs> and everywhere. So I, I don't. 
have a terrible crisis of confidence okay. about the material, even if the, well. yeah. But you know, I'm, on the other hand, I know I've worked in, I do we worked with comedians, so proper comedians, mm. stand-ups, and they're always going. Well, they were a terrible audience, you know, terrible audience. They didn't laugh, but, my, you know, <laughs> but it's always the audience. You know? It's always the audience, but not that. Uh, but in, you know, I think sometimes you just can't tell. The audience is not just a collective. Well, it's a collection of lots of individuals, individuals. who all bring in a Human. different energy, yeah. um, and so you don't know. They've all got a story leading up to the moment that they come into the room, and 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 that can infect the others. You know, so it's and so have you. You know, so it's there's so many variables. Um, so I think you just have to just plow on and and do what you do, and do remember it. that look, this material worked great yesterday, and if it's not hitting home exactly, it will work um, well tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> or it or it will, or something, or quite often people will come up to you often said that well that was great I really love that and you think oh, that's I you thought need. I thought yeah. that wasn't happening and <laughs> that's not just a you know a, a, another issue it's interesting because when you from, you know you, you probably people in the audience are quite often not aware that the performer is looking out into black most of the yeah. time because you're blinded by the lights. Yeah, so you've got these light lights on you, so you don't really see what's going on. You can't see. So somebody, instead of laughing out loud, yeah. which you can hear, you know, they have a little smirk, which they're enjoying. Um, Silent laughter. You know, you can't hear that as well. And if you stand up, you've got a space where you can hear the smaller laughter. Yeah. But if you're uh, doing music, that space is being filled by a very loud sound, so I can't tell. If you know, if, if it's going down badly, yeah. yeah so well, I, you know, basically, I need you know, you're, you're a great laugh, you see. So I need you there every day to go. Wah, wah, wah. Loud laugh, loud laughing, and, and that is also infectious anyway. True. You know, so well, yeah. sounds fantastic. Well, best of luck for the rest thank of very much. the fringe, and thank you very much for speaking to us today. Great, my we look forward to seeing you at twelve forty-five afternoon lunchtime, lunchtime at the Gilded Balloon. At the Gilded Balloon. This is Ross Jennings from Waffle TV. Thank you.